And look who's here, the Dividend Man, David Barnson is here. All right, David, I want to thank you, first of all, very much for recommending a Blackstone way back when. Uh, and I've made a lot of money out of it, and I bought it back then because it paid a big dividend. They reported today the stock's gone up. What's with the dividend on, on the Blackstone now? In the first quarter of last year, they paid 93 cents per share. This year, they're going to pay $1.65 per share. Whoa. The dividend is up 80% over where it was a year ago. So roughly, if you annualized it, it would end up being back to another 6% dividend, and the stock's up 100% from where it was a year ago. Forget this little 8% rally today. Who cares about that when you're a long-term holder like Stuart Varney and David Bonson? <laughs> but I do want to make one thing clear. Blackstone is unique in that their dividend will fluctuate quarter by quarter because they pay it out based on quarterly cash flow results. They have a lot of realizations in their investment that make results go up and down. I think it's going to be a huge year. I think it's going to be a big dividend, but it isn't quite the same as some companies that just pay it. Okay. quarterly and smooth it out. Understood. I'm a happy camper, David. Don't worry about it. Now, how about McDonald's? It's on the list of... Uh, is, is that a dividend payer, a dividend stock? <laughs> Stuart, McDonald's has grown the dividend every single year since going public. Since 1967, it's up something like 80,000%. That's a literal number. Um, and they have grown the dividend 28 times since the financial crisis. The only reason the dividend yields so low is because the stock is up 300%. Um, but yes, McDonald's is an incredible dividend grower, and that's what you can do when you have consistent cash flow. Uh, their franchisees have to pay their fees, and you and I have to have our french fries. Yes, we do indeed. IBM, I think you liked and recommended this stock uh, some time ago. Was it yielding, what, 4 or 5%? Yeah, they're yielding over 5%. I recommended it at about $100 a share on the show. It's up into the 130s now, but this thing is nowhere near done. It's still trading at a very low teens multiple. They had their best revenue growth in over 10 years that they announced on Tuesday. It was, uh, I mean, I've had plenty of quarterly disappointments from IBM in the years I've been analyzing it. This was a phenomenal quarter, and we think their future in cloud is huge. You see what cloud has done with Microsoft. Yeah, you got it. The uh, last one, Intel. Now, I know you like this over the long term. It's down 6% today. That, the dividend yield at $48 a share must be very strong. Well, they grew the dividend 5% this morning, and that tells me a lot more than the stock coming down a bit as they're spending $20 billion on uh, expanding in Ohio and bringing semiconductor yep. manufacturing to the United States. Um, yes, this is a stock for people who want to be long-term invested in the results of that growth. So look at what Broadcom has done the last couple of years, up 200%. Intel's investing into a different kind of future while maintaining that design semiconductor uh, intellectual property business. They are as good as it gets at this. And I will tell you, Intel being down 6% today is the best thing on the screen. I love stuff being down a little that we can buy for the future. It can't always go up like black. Blackstone. Yeah, it's very true. I'll think about Intel at 48 bucks a share. David, you are my yeah. idol, and thank you very much for being on the show again. Always appreciate it. David Bonson. Thank you, Stuart. Now,